The process of setting up a character for a video game will almost always involve the use of additional software apart from the game engine used to design and develop the video game. In the case of 3D games, software like Blender is useful for modeling, texturing, rigging and animating characters or any asset for your game. When you have a model done in Blender or any other 3D computer graphics application, or even a model you got on the web, you have to consider that 3D models are more than only the mesh that gives its shape. Materials applied to the mesh are what give to the model a unique look and style. In this video, I will cover the basics of texture painting in Blender and how to prepare your model to start this process. This is the first texturing technique I will explore in this tutorial series, and in the next part I will explain how to bake materials into textures. So, let's start! The first thing I want to do is to define the different areas in my mesh that will correspond to the different colors of the model, as this will be useful throughout the tutorial. For that, I go to the Object Data tab and I will be using face maps. I add a new one by pressing the plus sign and double click to rename as Skin. This will correspond to the area where the skin material will be assigned because it is the first face map, I will just select everything with A and press Assign. Next, I add another face map that will correspond to the shirt area. To assign the faces, I go to the front view by pressing 1, go to face selection mode, activate the transparency and make a box selection by pressing B and dragging the mouse over the area of the shirt. I have to correct the selection excluding the faces I don't want and including the ones that were missing. Then make sure you have the shirt face map selected and press assign. Now we can deselect everything with Alt A and if we click on select, we see how it is selected the area we have assigned to the shirt face map. And if we select the skin face map, we can observe that the shirt area has been excluded from it. Now let's assign the area for the pants. Make sure the small faces are also selected. Create a new face map call it pants and assign. The same for the shoes, make a box selection. If we have faces from other area, we can just select the corresponding face map and click on the select. Add a new face map, call it shoes and assign. We see now that the skin face map is assigned only to the area that actually corresponds to the skin in our character model. Now, to work with textures, we need to ungrab the model and generate a UV map. But in order to generate the UV map, we need to mark the seams of the model that will determine how the mesh will be ungrabbed. Enter edit mode with tab, change to edge selection mode, deactivate the transparency, deselect everything. Now I will select the area of the shirt. I am doing this because I want a scene around this area. So I press select, go to the select menu, select loops, select boundary loop. But I don't want these edges in the middle to have seams so I deselect them with circle selection by pressing C. And I keep the ones in the back. Then to mark the seams we press Ctrl E and select mark seam. In the pants area we can select this edge and to go all the way down we press Ctrl and left click and this will select all the edges in between. To ungrab the mesh, we can change the workspace to UV editing. Select everything with A, press U, ungrab. To check whether we have done a good job with the seams, we can go to the display options in the UV editor header and activate the stretch option. This is an indicator of how stretched or compressed are the polygons in the UV map. Blue means it is ok, green means it has some stress like in this area. To see exactly to which area in our model this part of the UV corresponds to, we have to activate the synchronization, we change to face selection mode and select one of these faces. If we have a look in the 3D view, we see that a face near the sleeve of the shirt has been selected. That is the area we have to fix. 
There is another region with green faces in this part of the UV map. These faces correspond to the lowest part of the pants. These faces are barely seen in our model, so fixing them is really not worth it. And I will leave this part just as it is, and I will fix only the shirt. Usually, when you have these kind of problems, it means you need to add seams to these compressed areas. We go back to edge selection mode and make a seam across the shoulder. We have to ungrab again, press U, ungrab, and if we select the green faces, we can see that now these faces are only the small ones that has been stretched out. But again, this won't have any big impact in our model design. Now it is time to apply the modifiers we have in our model. Go to the modifiers tab and to apply the modifiers you need to be in object mode, press apply. We need to generate again the UV map since now we have only half of it. Select all the faces, press U, ungrab. We can rearrange the UVs and to make it easier, we deactivate this option and make sure you are in island selection mode. It is a good practice to arrange the UV islands by materials and leave some margin between islands that have different materials. In this part of the tutorial, we will make the character texture by painting it in Blender. This is just to show the basics of Blender painting system, since for this specific model, I find better to use another technique that we will explore in the next tutorial that is to bake materials into textures. Now we can start painting. Go to the Texture Paint workspace, add a new texture of type base color. I will call this Painted Texture. Make the resolution 512 by 512. Set the blank color to white. Untick the alpha option and we can display the texture in the image editor. Press T to get rid of the tool panel. And now I want to explain one thing with this masking option. If I enter edit mode and make some face selection, then when I go back to texture paint mode and activate the face selection masking option, check how the faces that are selected are highlighted in some reddish color. And even in this mode, I can press C for circle selection and select faces from my model. Now I select the fill brush, pick a color, and click over the model and see how only the selected faces are filled. Do Ctrl C to undo, press Alt A to deselect all the faces. Now I will go to the face maps, select the skin face map, press select. Of course, to have access to these options, you must be in edit mode. Go back to the texture paint settings, pick a color for the skin and click over the model to fill the selected region. Now we can start making a color palette to save the colors we are using. Click on new and then in the plus sign to add the current color to the palette. There is another concept I want to bring out. For that let's go to project paint section and in bleed set the value to 0 pixels. This will control the margin around the islands when filling the regions and later on we will see its importance. For now I will use it with a value of 0 pixels but later we will change that to 4 pixels. We continue selecting the different regions and assigning colors to them. Note that I have been using all this time a string of the brush of one and the mix blend mode. In that way, I totally replace the color that is below with the one I have selected. If we have a look at the texture, we know that around the skin area there is a small margin that is actually two pixels as was set by the bleed parameter at the beginning. And in the rest of the regions there is no margin because later we have set the bleeding to zero pixels. The effect is that in these regions the seams become visible while in the skin are hidden. This should be fixed. This is the texture after painting it again with a bleeding of 4 pixels. All the seams have disappeared and the texture is ready to use. A very important thing you should always remember is that whenever you see a star aside the image menu, it means that you should save the image if you don't want to lose what you have done on it. Blender is not going to save it for you. So one option is to click on the image menu and select pack as PNG. The last part of the texture we have to complete are the facial features. We do just as with the other parts. We assign face maps to the mouth, eyes, iris and pupils and we paint these regions with a fill brush.
as we paint, it becomes evident that the texture is very low resolution. Of course, it is a 512 by 512 pixels texture and we could increase its size to improve the look of the model. But given that we are using a very low poly model, it would be great to have also low resolution textures. In the next tutorial, we will see a technique that we can use to keep the same resolution without having the pixelated effects we see in this model and also to automate the process of generating the texture of our character.